All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to the Clean Energy Program for New Buildings Community Webinar. My name is Chris Reed and I'm the Sustainability Manager for the City of San Luis Obispo. We are here this evening to discuss the role all electric new buildings play in helping achieve the community's climate action and other major city goals. We have an existing program that encourages all electric new buildings and are developing an update to this program that would require new buildings to be all electric starting in 2023. We are scheduled to present that update to City Council for their consideration on July 5th, 2022. Tonight's webinar is intended to be an educational presentation, sharing background and context and identifying what could be included in the 2022 update. We wanna hear from you. Please send questions to the moderators via the Zoom chat function. At the end of this presentation, we will provide next steps for further feedback. Finally, this webinar is intended for non-technical audiences. It will be a short overview of the work so you can get the info you need and get back to your evening. If you have expertise or deeper interest in this topic and you or a group you belong to would like to talk with us in greater detail, we'd love to talk with you further. and We'll describe how to do so later. Our agenda for this evening includes a description of current policies and programs, highlights what we've learned through program implementation and what is new in 2022, provides a high level overview of the proposed 2022 update and lays out next steps and opportunities for input. We'll start with current policies and program. Before we jump into the local policy context though, it is important to ground ourselves in the key issue driving this conversation, the climate crisis. Atmospheric greenhouse gas concentrations have reached critical levels, and many of us now have lived experience of historic droughts, historic flooding, heat, and wildfire. This picture from a community in the Bay Area in 2020 is a reminder of the orange sky caused by the wildfire. We've seen these impacts. And we know that to avoid even worse impacts, we need to cut global greenhouse gas emissions dramatically by the end of this decade and entirely by mid-century. We present this information to underscore the critical nature of our climate and sustainability work. And for these reasons, among many others, the community and city council have prioritized climate action as a major goal for the last six years. After extensive community outreach, City Council adopted the Climate Action Plan for Community Recovery in 2020. The plan establishes the goal of citywide carbon neutrality by 2035 and identifies foundational actions to achieve these goals that also advance community priorities related to housing, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and enduring economic recovery and development. The plan includes a portfolio of actions including actions to rapidly clean up the grid, invest in active transportation and clean mobility, reduce the amount of waste that ends up in the landfill and support our open spaces. This image is provided to give sense of the broad nature of the work underway. We will provide a link to the plan in our follow-up if you'd like to dig into further detail. The plan also focuses on how greenhouse gas emissions are generated by building energy use and includes a goal of no net new emissions from buildings on-site energy use by 2020. I know that's a mouthful, so I'll say it again. The adopted goal is no net new emissions from buildings on-site energy use by 2020. The plan also includes a goal for existing buildings. And while we were working hard on both goals, tonight's presentation focuses exclusively on new buildings. New buildings are a critical part of achieving the community's carbon neutrality goals. To give a sense of scale, between 2023 and 2035, we could see 3,000 to 4,000 new housing units and have capacity for over 1 million square feet in new non-residential buildings. Those buildings can either provide new climate action challenges or be climate action solutions. How do we get to no new operational emissions from new buildings? Well, to answer that question, it is helpful to understand how buildings use energy. 
Many buildings in our community use natural gas for water heating and space heating and for other appliances like clothes dryers and stoves. Natural gas is primarily composed of methane, which is a powerful greenhouse gas that warms the atmosphere more than 80 times as much as carbon dioxide does over a 20 year period. When combusted in our homes, natural gas releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And we know that given leakage rates at extraction, transmission and distribution systems, and in our own homes, substantial amounts of methane are being released directly into the atmosphere as the result of our natural gas use in our buildings, further accelerating the climate crisis. All electric new buildings, on the other hand, are paired with state-required on-site rooftop solar and are plugged into a California electricity grid that is rapidly decarbonizing with new renewable energy and storage solutions regularly coming online. While electric appliances may not have been ready in the past, modern electric systems use heat pump technology and can generate the same amount of heat using a third or even a quarter of the energy used in natural gas appliances. Most heat pump space heaters also come standard with air conditioning as a bonus. Cost is a major concern and housing production continues to be a major city goal. Our findings based on previous studies indicate that all electric new buildings can be cost comparable or even cheaper to build and operate than mixed fuel buildings. How is this possible? Well, all electric new buildings are typically simpler to build and only require offsite infrastructure for one energy system, only require hooking up with one utility and avoid the need for natural gas piping and related ventilation equipment. Additionally, state required onsite solar systems mitigate costs associated with the electricity bill. For these reasons, the City Council's adopted policy per Council Resolution 11133 is that new buildings should be all electric. Currently, the Climate Action Plan and the City's all electric building policy are implemented through a program that encourages all electric new buildings. Under this program, all electric new buildings built to the standard requirements of the state energy code and buildings with natural gas, also called mixed fuel buildings, build with increased efficiency and performance requirements. This program is currently supported with state regulations requiring rooftop solar and with local city provided technical incentives, regulatory flexibility, and connections to incentives for multifamily affordable housing. The city's current program has been in place since September of 2020. Since then, city staff have evaluated the effectiveness of the program and have monitored statewide trends. In December of 2021, city staff analyzed one year of permit data and found that all types of buildings were being permitted that are all electric, from track housing to ADUs or accessory dwelling units, from multifamily buildings to mixed use buildings, from affordable housing to high-end custom homes. While these projects account for over 100 new residential units, they also only reflect approximately 46% of the permits submitted over that period. This roughly 50-50 split of electric buildings and mixed fuel buildings is not sufficient to accomplish citywide objectives for greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, let's now zoom out to share what we've learned at the state level. All electric new buildings are becoming the new standard in California. As of this webinar, we are aware of 54 local governments encouraging or requiring all electric new buildings, with approximately 45 of those outright prohibiting natural gas in new buildings in one or more sectors. If you include some of the expected adoption of new codes in June by new cities, by this summer, about a quarter of the state's population or approximately nine and a half million people will live in a community with all electric new buildings policy. Examples of comparable cities to San Luis Obispo include the city of Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, Petaluma, Ojai, Davis, and Solana Beach. At the same time, the state is rapidly moving towards all electric new buildings. Its 2022 Building and Energy Code includes all electric building provisions, but not requirements. 
and the state budget is pushing for more all electric incentives and support. And the currently posted draft of the state's climate work plan includes phasing out gas in certain new buildings by mid decade and possibly even limiting access to natural gas appliances at the point of sale. The short point here is that all, ele all electric new buildings are going to continue to be a priority of the state and we have the opportunity to align with these priorities in a way that is consistent with our community vision and values. And finally, there are a number of critical health and safety findings that have become apparent since adoption of the existing program. An emerging body of literature has identified negative health impacts as a result of combusting natural gas indoors without proper ventilation. All electric new buildings have no indoor combustion and as a result, have substantially better indoor air quality. Additionally, as more is learned about leakage rates in the gas system and in our homes, and as the global warming potential of natural gas's primary component, methane, is better understood, it is clear that natural gas is a driver of global climate change and the subsequent impacts from that that's experienced in our community. So now that we've discussed the city's policies and existing programs and what we've learned as we've implemented it, I will turn to the proposed 2022 update. In February of 2022, city staff presented a study session to city council containing much of the information that is in this presentation. The draft 2022 update is responsive to the strategic direction provided by council and includes three main provisions. First, the proposed update would shift from a choice-based program to one requiring that new buildings be all electric. Second, the proposed update would focus exclusively on new buildings. And third, the proposed update will contain programmatic approaches to supporting resilience in partnership with utilities like PG&E and Central Coast Community Energy. It will contain ongoing outreach to refine program performance, and will include reasonable exemptions for end uses or building types that truly have no all electric alternatives. The proposed update would provide several key benefits and outcomes. First, the approach is consistent with adopted policy and the adopted climate action plan. While achieving these ambitious goals, this emissions reduction program also happens to be cost effective and delivers buildings that are ready for the future. There is a saying that the best way to get out of a hole is to stop digging. We know that our community will be working hard over the next decades to rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And at the same time, we will continue to build housing and new buildings. Those buildings can include natural gas and grow the climate problem, or we can stop digging and require the new buildings to be part of the cost-effective solution. Second, there have been some comments from the community that this upgrade should include, that this update rather, should include existing buildings. We recognize how important existing building retrofits are, and we are working hard on solutions that empower building owners to retrofit their buildings with all electric appliances and systems if they so choose. In our work to date, we found that retrofits are substantially more challenging and require a much more nuanced approach over a longer period of time than new buildings. By requiring all electric new buildings in 2023 and separating that work from existing buildings, we can take the time to develop resources, incentives, and equitable solutions for retrofits that are aligned with community needs. And finally, the proposed approach delivers a consistent health and safety benefit across new buildings as previously discussed, including improved indoor air. The proposed approach presented tonight has been developed in response to feedback from the community, builders and developers, community-based organizations, and our city council. And now we wanna hear from you. And this brings us to next steps. First, uh, we've been tracking if there's been any questions in the chat function, and we look forward to providing answers as a follow-up to this session. Second, Open City Hall will be open tomorrow. Open City Hall is a platform the city provides that allows community members to provide feedback on proposals, and you can provide direct feedback to this proposal there. Third, we'll continue the community conversations. As we just mentioned, we spend a lot of time speaking with builders and developers and community-based organizations, 
And if your organization would like to meet with us to discuss this item in more detail, please respond to our follow-up email or indicate that you'd like us to meet with you via the Open City Hall platform. We'd love to chat with you and learn from you. Fourth, on June 8th, we'll be providing a presentation to Planning Commission. And finally, on July 5th, we'll be presenting this information to City Council along with the draft policy for their consideration. Should Council adopt the update, the requirements for all electric buildings would go into effect on January 1st, 2023. This brings us to the conclusion of tonight's webinar. Thank you for joining us and for your interest in the Clean Energy Program for new buildings. As promised, we've kept this very brief so you can get back to your evening. We'll be following up shortly via email with more information, including the link to the Open City Hall platform, the link to the project website, and answers to any of the questions that might have been posted tonight. Thank you very much and have a great night.